Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. We have an update today to the Dynamic LOD Reset Edition. This is now version 0 0.3.7. Um, in this video, I will be going over uh, updates to the program since the previous version. And I will correct one thing that I got wrong in my last video about this program. What I am not going to do is go over all the settings and go over all the features and how to set them up and how to use them. If you want to know how to use the program, I'll put a link in the description of this video. Simply go back and watch the previous video I did, uh, save for the one thing I got wrong, which I'll correct in this video later. Um, to get right into it, uh, to you, this is now downloadable from GitHub. Same as, the same as the previous version. So I'll put the GitHub link in the description as well. Download the installer. Do not run the installer as admin, okay? That's, uh, that's rule number one. Don't run the installer as admin. You double click the installer and this program, or this, this box comes up, okay? Now you do wanna create a link on the desktop. Um, number, the, the second important thing is use the do not configure auto start setting okay the the reason is kind of complicated and more technical than we need to go through here um but there there are potential issues with how the auto start feature works with fsu ipc and with msfs where it could uh potentially cause problems in future versions depending on how the sim is updated depending on how, how FSU IPC is updated. Save yourself the trouble, there's no need to do that. Just use the do not configure auto start uh, setting selection. And what you wanna do is uh, to run this program once you have it set up, before you start Microsoft Flight Simulator, simply click on the desktop uh, uh, shortcut to run Dynamic LOD Reset Edition. And once the program pops up uh, like this, then simply run Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's very, very easy. We don't need to make it any more complicated than that. Um, this program has some really, this version 3.7 has some really important features. Um, number one, it has uh, basically a, a future proofing setting. So with Microsoft Flight Simulator, this program act accesses active Microsoft Flight Simulator memory locations while the sim is running to read what level of detail and cloud quality settings you have. Um, and there's kind of always been a concern that if in a future sim update, Microsoft Flight Simulator changes where those memory locations are, that it could have a potential problematic interaction with this program uh, if it's not able to access what it needs to access. So now with version 0 0.3.7 and going forward, when you run the program and when you run Microsoft Flight Simulator, the, the program will check the memory locations, make sure they are still valid and it still has access to what it needs um, in order to run properly. If because of a sim update, because of a, a Microsoft Flight Simulator version change, if those memory locations have changed, Dynamic LOD Reset Edition will now go see if it can find the new memory locations that it needs to access and continue to function properly. If it can't find the memory locations it needs to access, the program will self-restrict to read-only mode and the program will no longer make changes to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, what does that mean to you and I? That means that if in a future SIM update, somehow they break what we need with this program to run, um, the program will automatically basically disable itself and not run. So it's not gonna cause any conflict if there's a change in a SIM update that messes up what this program needs to have access to, which is a really, really important, uh, really, really important update. Um, so, uh, the other intro, the other uh, important point, uh, and now I, I already have, uh, I've already installed the new version, so I'm just going to go ahead and run it, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, 
Oh yeah, it's already running. Well, that's one of the features. Okay, so if you try if you try to start the program and it's already running, it will tell you. Now, if you've got the program open and you click the X to close it, it doesn't go away. It simply goes to the system tray, as I just unwittingly demonstrated. Um, now, the next big change to this program is a version check. Okay, so when the program runs, you can see here I've got this green indication latest app version is installed. Um, if there is a new update to this program, when you run it, it, it will have a pop up and prompt you to download the newest version. Okay, um, so that, that's fantastic. You're not going to have to keep an eye on the GitHub page to see if the version changes. You're not going to have to worry about whether I make another video about it. The, the program itself will tell you. Okay, and the third important update to this uh, to this version of the program is that the average FPS counter is now going to take the frame gen mod into account. In other words, if you are running the, the frame gen mod, this program will now detect that, right? Because so much of this program is, is dependent on what FPS you're getting. The FPS adaption, um, you know, if you use this, the cloud recovery FPS feature uses your average FPS. So now the program will automatically detect if you're using the frame gen mod and use that value to uh, you know, implement the FPS features of the program, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, the, the one thing that I mentioned in the previous video that I got wrong. So those those are the big the big updates to this version, and they're significant. Um, the one thing that I got wrong in the previous version of the program, uh, and the developer who goes by reset reset transponder reset xpdr. If you see this person uh, commenting in the in the comment sections of the videos, he is the developer. He's done a wonderful job with this program. Has a very cute dog as well. You'll see the dog in his in his little uh, profile photo. Um, so he corrected me on this, and I'm very grateful that he did. So the Cruise LOD updates program uh, feature, rather, if you have Cruise LOD updates unchecked, when the trend is in Cruise, the uh, LODs, your TLOD and OLOD will not update based on undulating terrain below you, okay? So if you're going over a mountain range, let's say you go over the Andes or you go over the Himalayas where there's a huge change in altitude, um, if you are, well, a huge change in your, in your altitude above the ground level, AGL, above ground level, um, if your trend is in cruise, it will ignore those changes and just maintain whatever LOD values you have, okay? Um, that's the way the program was initially designed to run. One of the updates, one of the features that Reset Transponder brought to uh, the Dynamic LOD Reset Edition is the Cruise LOD updates. And the Cruise LOD updates, what this does, if, if it's enabled, um, the LODs will update in Cruise when you are in a, in a Cruise trend, but only if uh, the AGL values exceed the values that you have set by plus or minus 5%. In other words, let's say I'm cruising along over some rolling hills that are 15,000 feet below the airplane. Um, if I have cruise LOD updates checked, if, the, if the, my height above the ground below me goes from, let's say, 14,900 to 15,100 to 14,950 to 15,110, et cetera, when it's making small undulating changes like that beneath me, it's not going to jump back and forth from this 300 to 400 value constantly because that would really, you would, you would notice it, okay? It only changes those, your LOD values if the, AGL value is exceeded by more, more than plus or minus 5%. So um, uh, math is not my strong suit. I don't know what plus or minus 5% is of 15,000. I'm sure plenty of you can figure it out in two seconds. Um, but uh, 
that's that's the thing that I got wrong in the previous version. Okay, um, and the uh, the other thing is, um, if you have LOD step max enabled along with the cruise LOD updates, um, any change in your in either OLOD or TLOD um, will be smoothed out by this step max rate. Okay. Now what that means is I've got them set to five, right? So between 7,500 feet and 15,000 feet, I've got a, well, and 14,999 feet, I have a, a terrain level of detail of 300. Once I exceed 15,000, it's going to go to 400. Um, with the step max enabled, uh, it's going to anticipate, not only if I'm in the climb trend, it will anticipate when I'm going to hit 15,000 feet and start changing my TLOD by plus five as many times, you know, it will be 20 times because there's a 100 uh, point difference between 300 and 400. So it will change it 20 times slowly by a value of five to, to have a gradual transition from 300 to 400 rather than an abrupt transition. Now, as regards the cruise LOD version, the cruise LOD updates, um, if it does get past that plus or minus 5% that triggers a TLOE, TLOD update, it's only going to start changing them by, uh, by, an, uh, by a terrain level of detail value of 5 rather than triggering an automatic 100. So what this does is just smooths out any transitions in your LODs, either TLOD or OLOD. It's fantastic. Um, particularly when we think about the fact that this program, this is not all about frames per second. I know we're all about that. Um, this program is about smoothness. This is about smoothing out our experience, smoothing out the changes in LODs. Um, and so this, this cruise LOD and LOD step max go a long way in doing that. It's a fantastic program. Reset Transponder has done all this work, uh, you know, on his own time. And we should all be very, very grateful uh, to him for doing this for us. Like I said, the uh, description of all these settings in the program, how to use them, what they all mean, how to change them, etc., is in the video I will link in the description. And beyond that, we give our thanks to Reset Transponder, and uh, I give my thanks to you guys. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to go ahead and, and uh, put a comment in the video. And we will see you next time.